Good morning, everyone, this fifth Sunday of Easter. Welcome to Old Audubon's worship today. We pray that you're having a great day. It is so sunny. It is wonderful outside. So if you get a chance to look, to think, to see and enjoy, be present today with us in worship. Some uh, announcements um, before church. This week after uh, service, uh, uh, stay for fellowship, but also recognize that we will be, uh, so either stay for fellowship or meet us at the front for drive-by worship. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this absolutely wonderful day. Give us a spirit of hearing and being present and knowing that you are with us. Allow us to enjoy the fact that we are your children, God. Let us put aside all the things that distract us and help us hear from you. Let us be forever changed. Let us feel the joy of the Lord. Let us be so excited by hearing the good news that we are changed and then we can change the world. We thank you, God, for all of these wonderful things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this praise. Let us all greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ be with you. We worship the God who inhabits our world. And, and dwells in our lives. We need not look up to find God. Mm. We need only to look around. Within ourselves. Beyond ourselves into the eyes of another. We need not listen for a distant thunder to find God. We need only listen to the music of life. The words of children. The questions of the curious. The rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who inhabits our world. And who dwells and who indwells our lives. And our opening hymn today will be found in the Faith We Sing, number 2236, Gather Us In.
Almighty, all merciful God, through Christ Jesus, you have taught us to love one another, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and even to love our enemies. In times of violence and fear, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts so that we may not over, be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Help us to see each person in light of the love and grace you have shown us in Christ. Put away the nightmares of terror and awaken us to the dawning of your new creation. Establish us, um, uh, establish among us a future where peace reigns, where justice is done with mercy and all are reconciled. We ask these things in the name for the sake of our Jesus. And our sung prayer response is the Song of Hope, which is 2186 in the faith we sing, and we will sing the refrain twice. The Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 22, uh, verses 25 through 31, and I'll be reading from the Message Bible. Here in this great gathering for worship, I have discovered this praise life, and I'll do what I promise right here in front of the God worshipers. Down and out or sit at God's table and eat their fill. Everyone on the hunt for God is here praising him. Live it up from head to toe. Don't ever quit. From the four corners of the earth, people are coming to their senses, are running back to God. Long lost families are falling on their faces before him. God has taken charge. From now on, he has the last word. All the power mongers are before him, worshiping. I almost lost my along with those who never got it together worshiping our children and their children will get in on this as the word is passed along from parent to child babies not yet conceived will hear the good news that god does what he says amen for the word of god amen Thank you, Aaron. And I will follow up with our New Testament lesson. Like Aaron, I'm also reading from the message. And our reading today is Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Later, God's angel spoke to Philip. At noon today, I want you to walk over to that desolate ro road that goes from Jerusalem down to Gaza. And he got up and went. He met an Ethiopian eunuch coming down the road. The eunuch had been on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and was returning to Ethiopia 
where he was minister in charge of all the finances of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. He was riding in a chariot, reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit told Philip, climb into the chariot. Running alongside, Philip heard the eunuch reading Isaiah and asked, do you understand what you're reading? He answered, how can I without help? And invited Philip into the chariot with him. The passage he was reading was this, as a sheep led to slaughter and quiet as a lamb being sheared, he was silent, saying nothing. He was mocked and put down, never got a fair trial. But who now can count his kin since he's been taken from the earth? The eunuch said, tell me, who is the prophet talking about, himself or some other? Philip grabbed his chance. Using this passage as his text, he preached Jesus to him. As they continued down the road, they came to a stream of water. The eunuch said, here's water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the chariot to stop. They both went down to the water and Philip baptized him on the spot. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of God suddenly took Philip off. And that was the last the eunuch saw of him. But he didn't mind. He had, he had what he'd come for and went on down the road as happy as could be. Philip showed up in Azotus and continued north, preaching the message in all the villages along that route until he arrived at Caesarea. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're back now completely. And we thank you for your patience. Let us pray. And after I pray, we're going to be uh, Chelsea uh, screen sharing just for a minute. Lord God, we thank you that you see us and you know us. The very hairs on our head and the thoughts and intents of our hearts, whether they be evil or good. But you, oh God, know us and you know the plans that you have for us plans to prosper and give us good success. So God, help us open our hearts to you. That God, whether it be a stranger or someone who is known to us, to give us that word of life in the time of need, that we may blossom and grow and be as happy as we can be, that we may be able to share the good news to all that is around even our families and ourselves. We thank you, God, for all of this in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. And I will be screen sharing, I think. Okay. Okay. I think whatever happened doesn't let me um, share. Okay. So I will go through and um, I will, because it won't let me screen share. Ah, uh, here, it, nope. So let me continue and I'll, I'll, sh I'll share what I have to do later. So I need you to see this. You may not be As, the host. You go ahead, not, I'm sorry. You may not be the host. When you lost your link, the host was given to Chelsea. So they may have to, whoever has, is the host may have to give it up back to you. Um, pastor, pastor is host. So it's okay. most likely a device issue. Okay. Uh, 
Gotcha. Okay, so we'll continue. Um, we'll continue. As part of our education for my Master of Divinity, we had to experience an intercultural immersion. I chose to go to Ethiopia for multiple reasons. One was I wanted to experience a completely different culture than the ones in America. Secondly, I wanted to go to an English speaking country so that I did not have to overcome the difficulty of translation. Finally, I wanted to go because it was a Christian immersion to a place that had an ancient Christian culture. It was an extra bonus that the people who were there looked like me as well. We spent 10 days immersed in a culture that was at once foreign, but yet strangely familiar. We learned many things in this immersion, but one thing stuck with me throughout the entire time. It was the fervor at which they worship and the lengths that they would go to experience that worship. They would sometimes travel for miles and miles just to be in prayer together, rain or sign. Sometimes they would spend all day in celebration. Although men and women worship separately, it didn't feel like they were separated because they were all worshiping together. We were shown some very ancient uh, Christian manuscripts with beautiful paintings and lyrical scripts. We were educated in all the languages that were spoken, which include, include Amharic and Gaze, the language of the priest. We were also shown the building where the Ark of the Covenant was, set, was set, uh, said to be. There were temples built of solid rock that were just too beautiful to describe. A church was built in the cave that we had to walk uh, at least a thousand steps to get to. And yet there were people who were going up and down every day. I wanted to know what made this culture so willing to worship. I wanted that type of de dedication. We had to remind ourselves to stop complaining because it was hot and we had to walk and we had to go places and we were hungry, but that did not seem to matter. I wanted to have what they had. So this brings me to our reading for today. There are two central characters in this gospel scripture. The one that we don't often think about is Philip. Now we don't know if this is Philip that was one of the 12 disciples or was this Philip who was one of the first deacons. Whatever, he was called the evangelist because the one thing we do know in all the scripture is that he had no problem sharing the gospel and evangelizing. The disciples were busily uh, spreading the gospel every, everywhere. They had seen the risen savior. They knew that Jesus was alive and they were going to tell everyone that. In their travels, the spirit spoke to Philip and told him to go into a desert place, not knowing where he was going. In fact, he was going to a place that he didn't, had not been before and didn't think that anybody was there. And yet the spirit knew. As he was going to the place that God told him to go, he saw a chariot. Now I need you to paint this picture for you. It wasn't just a chariot in isolation. It was a chariot with horses and attendants 
and slaves and people who were there, it would have been a sight to have seen that chariot. It's not like a individual car, an individual chariot. It would have been a procession. This seemed to have been a man of some importance that Philip, that God told Philip to run up to. Now, let me introduce you to this man. This man is a top official of the courts of the queen of Ethiopia. Not only a top, top official, but he was the man in charge of the money. He was fluent in many languages, not just Amharic, not just Gaez, but Hebrew and Aramaic as well. He was wealthy enough to have ridden in a chariot, to have attendants and slaves, and to have his own personal scroll of Isaiah. Recognize that at that time, it wasn't like there were books that were there. Everything was handwritten. So it would have taken some type of wealth for him to have his entire personal scroll of Isaiah. Personally, however, he was a eunuch, which means he had been castrated. He was very religiously dedicated because he had to come to Jerusalem to worship and was on his way back home from Ethiopia, a journey of some 1,500 miles. Yet despite his wealth, he was still searching for something. Although spiritual dedi spiritually dedicated, he could not convert to Judaism because he could not be circumcised. And the Greeks didn't want him because they considered him to be a half man. So this unit worshiped alone. Now enters Philip. Philip runs alongside this chariot, this big procession, and while he is running, he can hear the eunuch reading the scroll of Isaiah. And it read, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before his shearers is silent, so he does not open his mouth. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall know his generation? since he is removed from the earth. Philip asked this man, do you understand what you're reading? And the man said, how could I understand unless somebody interprets it to me? And the eunuch asked him, come on up and explain what it is that he's saying. Now in itself, two miracles had just occurred. First of all, that Philip was able to catch up to the eunuch in the chariot. And secondly, that this man who apparently is extremely wealthy would actually listen to this barefoot person. He doesn't know and think that he's going to explain it to him. That is a miracle in and, uh, in and of itself. Philip took his chance and got up and explain the scripture and had and took the opportunity to preach Jesus that Jesus had arisen and told him go into all the world and preach the gospel baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit the reason we know that he said that to the end, because the next thing the eunuch said is, hey, here's water. Why can't I be baptized? At this point, some of the translations of the scripture had the eunuch saying, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of, Lord, of God 
and I want to be saved. The eunuch told the charioteer to stop and they got out and Philip baptized the eunuch and then the spirit took the eunuch away. But the scripture says the eunuch never saw Philip again, but it was okay because he actually found and got what he was looking for. He was overjoyed because he had found community. What was it? What was it that the eunuch was looking for that he would try, travel 1,500 miles to see or get? How dedicated must this man have been to go to a place that he didn't know to worship a God he only were, read about, couldn't be a part of, and nobody wanted him in the first place. How much did God love this one person? The scriptures never even told us what the eunuch's name was, but that God loved him so much that he would send one person to a place that they didn't even know they would be there to explain the gospel and not only explain the gospel, but make it so that it was alive to him, to allow him to be able to create and join the community of faith. You see, the unit believed in a religion that didn't accept him, Judaism or in Greek, but God loved him enough to tell him, you are accepted in the community of faith. In fact, it is said that Philip had the first con convert to Christianity that was a Gentile. The first, even before Paul. In our today's world, many people are like the eunuch. No matter the wealth, the socioeconomic status, the gender or gender affinity, the ethnicity or any other thing that separate, separates us, God still loves us and knows where we are. We have watched brown and black people, especially males who've been seemingly singled out. Whether they were doing anything or not, they seem to have been a target. It's easy, however, to become cynical and think that the world is not fair or it's biased or it's prejudiced or it's unfeeling. Some feel as if we don't belong anywhere, regardless of who we are. We can be a conservative in a liberal community or a female in a male dominated world or differently abled in a world that values fitness. You may be that awkward kid or that egghead who loves anime. You may be the one woman, childish woman in a PTA group. Our world is so very good at finding differences and determining who fits, but not our God. You see, we serve a God who knows our names and he numbers the very hairs on our head. God loves us enough to send a barefooted person running up to us just to give us the good news of the gospel that God loves us. It's up to us to listen and accept this person into our circles long enough to learn something. It's us to us to, to ask what prevents me, what pre prevents me to, from being baptized into the community of faith, into the Holy Spirit. And once the offer is made for us to accept God in God's fullness, we can be immersed. You see what the eunuch was looking for was community and the God who accepted him just as he was. 
Philip is said to have made the first, as I said, Gentile convert to Christianity. Because the eunuch was a witness, many heard the gospel of Jesus. In fact, some historians credit the eunuch as bringing Christianity to Ethiopia. I don't know whether or not this is true, but I do know that the people I met in Ethiopia had a fervor and a faith and a hunger and a thirst for a relationship for a, with a true and living God. In that country, there are churches and places of worship everywhere. When that church, there are people everywhere who smiled at me, not because we were foreigners, but just cause. I want to know what are you searching for? Have you heard the good news? Is it part of your living journey? Are you immersed into the God that says, come as you are, but just don't stay as you are? Are you and have you found a community of saints who accepts you and can love you in yourself? Do you accept people in this community of faith as they are? Are you welcoming and hospitality, hospitable to those who don't look like you, smell like you, talk like you, even worship like you worship? God is so willing to send whoever it takes to bring the good news to others and to us. You may be the Philip in your community. Are you ready to go to where God sends you, even if you don't know where you will end up? What are you looking for? And we're praying that what you're looking for is God's purpose in your life. Amen and amen. And please join me in our response to the sermon, which we found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 703, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot.
Amen. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. If you know anything about the history of the old Negro spirituals, you knew that that was a call to freedom, not necessarily saying, okay, I'm going to die, but it meant go with us to freedom. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. We now respond to God's word through our faithful giving. We appreciate the fact that you have all been such generous givers. In your giving, you have actually given the chance to, for others to be free from their oppression, from their hunger, from their issues, because you have given and have been always willing to give. You may give your offering online at oldaudubon250.org and to donate. Recognize that everything that you give, you become that Philip who is walking along with someone who is looking for something. And as you're looking and you're being ob obedient, you can, they can be heard just because of your generous offering. So we thank you and we thank you again. Amen. It is now time for the announcements. For our prayers and our prayers concerns, which we will pray for afterwards. Don't forget to print out the uh, announcement bulletin. You can see our list is getting longer. However, it is because you are a praying people. And many of the people who have been on the list have called us back and said, God has answered our prayer. So make sure that you continue to pray every day, not just for Sunday. We do want to lift up our Baltimore ceasefire, uh, which is next weekend. And we want to make sure that that's something we want to pray for community wide prayer. Amen. We still have our noonday prayer on Wednesday. Then the lit number is listed. Please call us. It is free. We are waiting to hear from you and pray with you. Amen. Our second quarter mission is the American uh, Maryland Food Bank, uh, whose primary concern is making sure that there is enough nutritious food for everyone in this country. No one, especially children, should be going hungry. So please help ensure the safety net uh, is there for those who are facing food insecurity and to give for your uh, Maryland Food Bank. Uh, if shopping on uh, Amazon, please designate Old Audubon and Amazon Smile as your uh, charity. It is Old Audubon Baltimore. It's easy to find. So every time you order something on Amazon, a portion goes to the church and you would not believe how much it adds up. And so we appreciate that. Um, volunteers are needed uh, to coordinate uh, volunteer opportunity, opportunities for the food bank and the movable feast. If you are interested, 
please email us and we will get you uh, uh, hooked up to people who are uh, volunteering. Volunteers are now open and are accessible. Uh, so this is a place where you can be the Philip in your community. Exciting thing is that the in-person Bible study starts again this Wednesday at 6. We are starting in the Gospel of Matthew. Please bring your own Bible and your own paper. But we are starting there with in-person Bible study in the courtyard. We're excited about that again. So we're finally uh, getting to get together. It is for 45 minutes at the most, but please come out on Wednesdays at six o'clock from six to 6.45, seven at the latest, but 6.45. Um, we are uh, again praying for the Baltimore uh, ceasefire, which is next weekend. It, uh, it does correspond to Mother's Day. If you wanna know more about it, there's a link there about the Facebook page. It happens at least once a year. And we uh, want to make sure that we not only pray, but be, be part of this move, movement. And there's something else that is exciting. If you have ever been at the church when it's time for, um, uh, for the O's parking, we have O's parking again. We do need volunteers to help us uh, volunteer just a couple hours. Um, the monies that, is, that are um, gotten, it's, it's, I think it's $20 for, to park, um, helps us to... Um, uh, remove and improve and change the carpet. As if you can have any memory of the carpet, the carpet definitely needs to be changed. And so we do appreciate it for a couple of hours. Uh, you can uh, contact June. She will show you how to do it. it, it um, there is a schedule that is out um, where you can go and sign up. You don't have to sign up multiple times. Just sign up once and you'll find out how much fun it is. So we appreciate all of you that would want to um, volunteer. And speaking of volunteering, if you go back and if you look uh, uh, behind me, you can see that there are beautiful flowers here. Um, there are uh, flowers that have been cultivated specifically because it's beautiful and it's a place of, of God's uh, respite in our garden. But those flowers allow us to put flowers on the altar. So if you would like to come on a uh, Saturday or Friday evening and make the flower arrangement, please contact me or Betty um, as we can uh, make these flower arrangements on um, on Sunday. Now we did have a used to we used to order uh, flower arrangements definitely on the altar. But if you have been or seen our garden, it is in full bloom. So as we are asking for volunteers who like doing this and who like to do flower arrangements, we would really appreciate that. And um, for reopening. We have a task force that is regularly meets to discuss the trans, trans, um, transition from uh, fully closed to fully opening. We are definitely, definitely so close. What I need to tell you, though, is that you can see after this time for what that we have had to use my hotspot. And as you can see, the uh, internet is shoddy at best. And in order for us to really fully reopen, we need our internet, which is on the way. Comcast is working. They tell us it's going to take about a month or so to get the entire place wireless, wireless, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. At that point, we can all reopen safely and those who want to be in person can be and those who want to continue to see us online can be. But we need to wait until the entire campus is wireless. It is coming, it is taking a year, 
but Comcast was here on Wednesday and they're coming at least once or twice a week. So we've got something to, we have something to not only look forward to, but it's happening. And we don't want to have to do what we just did last week and week before and and this week, which is have the internet go out and then have to get back on again. So patience is a virtue, but we're almost there. If you need to be vaccinated, because as you can know, we're following the vaccinating and CDC pro, 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 protocols, please email me or call me and we can get you vaccinated. There are vaccination sites everywhere. In fact, right next door at the convention center. So if you need to get vaccinated, please let us know. Because as you know, when we are vaccinated, we're waiting for that 75% herd immunity, which means everybody needs to vaccinate. Not just the first vaccine, but the second one as well. So um, we need everyone to be vaccinated if you're already not, if you haven't done it already. Uh, if you have questions about it, again, just email me or contact me and we can talk about it. Amen. That ends the end of our um, announcements, unless there are others. Pastor, may I um, mention something about our 250th celebration? Am I unmuted? Uh, yes, you're, you're, you're unmuted. Okay, cool. Um, I just want to say real briefly that we have a guest preacher coming on May 16th, so two weeks from today, and I believe we will still be on Zoom. Uh, this is Reverend Sarah Andrew Schlickert. She's a, a fourth generation pastor, and her family is out of the Evangelical United Brethren Church. She's a young pastor um, in her 30s, and she's also recently been appointed beginning July 1st as Annapolis District Superintendent. So we're very excited that Reverend Sarah Schlickert will be our guest preacher and that's May 16th. So you may want to alert friends and family. And I've invited her to include her family. Um, her husband, Chris is director of camping and retreat ministries and her young daughters are absolutely adorable. And I said, please feel free to bring your family uh, into that experience. So I hope you will let your friends and acquaintances know that we have a special event coming up on May 16th. Thanks for letting me butt in pastor, I appreciate it. Amen. And um, Mimi just said, who works at the convention center, that there is no line that you can, and there, you don't need a, um, an appointment. You can just walk up and get a, uh, an appoint, a vaccine, which is wonderful. There is a note here that says Jesus would wear a mask and his hands um, and get the vaccine because he loves us. And that is an amen. That is an amen. So it's now time, if there are no more announcements, and thank you, uh, Reverend Cindy, for to share our joys and concerns. It is a time. God knows our, our hearts, our joys, and our concerns. But God also knows that we are in a community. And as a community, we pray for each other and we pray together for ourselves. And please unmute as we pray together. Our Father, Father who art, who art hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done, will be done. On, earth. on earth as it is, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, us this Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our trespasses. Our trespasses. As we As forgive we those, forgive those trust who trespass against, against us, and lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but, deliver but deliver us, us, from, us from, evil. from evil. For thine is the kingdom, is the kingdom and the power, and the, power forever, and the glory, and glory forever. forever. Amen. 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 And our closing hymn today will be found in the United Methodist Hymnal. Uh, number five, seven, one, go make all disciples. Number five, seven, one.
Amen. We have a, a relatively short benediction, but I was able to share the screen. So do you all want to see it now? It only has like four slides or do you want to wait until we're all done? But it's a it's a side of Ethiopia to of what we're talking about today. Yes, I hear yeses. I see yeses. Yes. yes. I see yeses. Yes. Okay. It only takes a minute. And here we go. In our immersion community, we were all seekers looking for a bit of wisdom, looking for a bit of knowledge and looking to see where we could find God. As I said, the men and women worshiped together, but they all worshiped freely. We, they gave us the ability to look at some very, very ancient manuscripts. And some of those were as old as the fourth century. This is, and you may need to correct me, but this was a, uh, a, a painting of Philip and, um, and his chariots. And if you'll go and see, I'm sitting at the top, but in the bottom, that is an entire church that is underground. And this was the church that was in a cave. It was built completely in the cave that took only a, th it took a thousand ste steps or more for us to get to. And finally, this was a place that they that is said that the Ark of the Covenant rest. We as outsiders could not go even close to it. This was as close as we could go, but you could see and hold and, and feel the reverence of that place. And that, that was it. Well, that, that was worth going through and seeing. <laughs> Amen. May you depart knowing the invitation of God to move from comfort to insecurity, from what we know to what we have yet to discover, from where we have been to where we have yet to go, from safety to a place of risk. Go in the example of the saints before you, the Israelites in the wilderness, the eunuch inviting a stranger inside to ride. Go in the name of Jesus our Christ, who said, follow me, without saying where he was going, just promising transformation and relationship with the triune God along the way. Amen and amen. And thank you all for uh, having patience enough to go through and see it and being the Philip in your journey and the eunuch who's still searching. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Uh, for those of you who want to stay in fellowship, that is wonderful. Um, but uh, Mimi and I and James are going to stand at the stay at the end and give us uh, give people drive through communion. And then after that, we're going to the um, Hanover Square and give the uh, communion. Last uh, time we went two weeks ago, um, we actually served at least 19 of the rev residents there. At least that's the last time we counted. So go and peace to love and serve the Lord and have a great weekend, everyone. Amen.